Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video. Um, and this video is being recorded after a couple of months now. I understand this has been a quite few, uh, quite a gap of a uh, few months. But uh, based on the feedback that we have received and the subscription rate that we have seen, as you guys have compelled us to make another video. So uh, last video that we made was for the, uh, there were actually a couple of videos that you can see on the channel. Those were about SIM solution, awesome. And uh, this one is about the endpoint detection and response. Please keep that feedback coming in and we'd love to hear that feedback. But, uh, and uh, let's start with this uh, presentation. So what is an endpoint detection response? Some people also call it endpoint threat detection and response. That's obvious that it's a security solution and it must be detecting some threats. So how is it different? What is it? Let's talk about it. First, as we break it down, it's an endpoint. Second is detection and response. The endpoint bit tells us that it has to do something with the endpoint. It's not a generic security solution that you can put in your uh, network. It, it's not an email gateway. It's not something related to the network. It's not a firewall. It has something to do with the endpoint. That means your regular users machines. It could be your servers even, but anything that comes under the umbrella of an endpoint has to be uh, the main focus of this solution. Second is the detection. It's an obvious thing that it has to detect something bad, something threatening to the environment and the response. That's an interesting part. It is not only the one that is detecting the threats, it is also making sure that it can respond timely before the threat actor moves into your environment. So we'll go through the definition, the solution that records behavior on endpoints detects suspicious behavioral patterns using data analytics and context-based information, blocks threats and helps security analysts remediate and restore compromised systems. That's lots of activity, lots of features in a one solution. So we'll start with the records behavior. So what's endpoint doing is, is sitting in on your endpoint and recording almost everything that your system is doing. What it is recording, we will talk about it in a while. And then based on those recordings, the behavior that it has recorded, there are different data analytics and based on the context in which it is running, it will identify different behavioral patterns. Now those behavioral patterns could be benign, those could be suspicious, but these data analytics and the context will define either, either it is a suspicious or not. And then once it has identified that it is a suspicious behavioral pattern based on your own policies, based on your own response um, method, it will either block the threat or it will only inform you. It also helps the security analyst to remediate and restore the compromised systems, how we will talk about it. So one thing is for sure, in a summary, the collection point of this solution is only endpoints. It's a single source. However, in the case of SIM solution, you remember there were multiple sources. It could have been an endpoint, it could have been a server, it could be firewall, anything in your environment that can send the logs could have been an audience for the SIM solution. So what are the components in when we are talking about the end game? We'll just briefly talk about the architecture of it as well. So it will have an agent that will be residing on your endpoint. It's a very small lightweight software code that will be sitting silently on your machine and recording the behavior of your machine, whatever is happening. That agent is also going to talk to one server that is the main server that is recording all the information throughout all the networks, uh, throughout all the endpoints in the networks and gathering them on the server and then it is doing the correlation and everything on that particular server. Then you have a web graphical user interface. 
It could be another machine. You can access the server from the art and you can go through the artifacts that have been collected by the agents. And then you can have an optional, another threat intelligence feed server also that provides you with the IOCs, that provide you with other known malware informations and behaviors. So this is a very simple architecture. On the left side, you have endpoints. They have agents installed on them and they are sending the, all the information that the behavior that is being recorded by those agents to the server. The server is the main collection point where all the information is coming in. And then you have graphical interface. You can access that server, go through all the artifacts, define your own policies, define your own response methods, define your own playbooks, define the remedial actions and define the prevention actions that the endpoint should do. And then you have threat intelligence feeds. So let's talk about what exactly are they doing? So the endpoint agent is providing you with the real time continuous monitoring. Either your server is online or offline, the agent that is residing on the endpoint is providing you with a continuous monitoring. And it is almost real time because it keeps on sending the behavior observed towards your main server. The data is being collected from the endpoint that as we have already discussed, it's a signature less detection. You are not pushing signatures to your endpoints, just like an antivirus. For example, antivirus could only do much that it has an IOCs, list of IOCs, list of hashes or something else, and is only comparing those with the files or the folders which you have specified in the antivirus and comparing those things. And if it finds something good, no, it's not finding anything, it's not going to report you anything. But in case of endpoint, uh, EDRs, they are detecting the behaviors. If one process is being executed that has, should not have been executed, it is going to be reported. If, for example, a Microsoft Word Office, which is a legitimate solution, is executing a PowerShell, which is also a legitimate solution, but they don't make sense. The Word Office should not be executing PowerShell. So now this behavior is suspicious and it will be reported by your EDR, which most likely your antivirus is, was going to miss because both of those uh, binaries that we are talking about or the solutions are legitimate. Then rules-based automated response, you can define your own rules, you can define your own playbooks that if something like this happens, what needs to be done? Either run a Yara rule, either you block that execution or whatever you want to do. So let's talk about what EDR is collecting. So EDR, a little lightweight agent sitting on your endpoint is collecting your network connections all the network connections going outwards, inwards on your endpoint that is happening are being collected by your endpoint detection response agent. All the process executions, for example, you double click a Word Office file. On the back end, word.exe is going to execute. That is going to be recorded. You run a PowerShell that is going to be recorded. You run any other application. If a process is generated based on that execution, that is going to be recorded. For example, if you run a file and it does some modifications in the registry, it creates some new files. Everything is going to be recorded by your endpoint detection agent and is going to be reported. The time that you start, the, the time that you deploy your agent it will also check very quickly all the currently running processes and it's going to report that also. And then cross process events. For example, one process talks to another process. These are all going to be recorded as well. So this is, for example, if you see in a summary, this collection, the artifacts that EDR is collecting, it's a big chunk of information real time almost everything that is happening on your endpoint is going to be reported to you on a server. Now imagine how can you use it? 
you have all the processes that are run, running on your endpoints and not only single endpoint because you have deployed your endpoint in the entire network. So you get to know that what kind of malicious file is running throughout in your own network. This you can do your, from your ser server. When you run your uh, threat hunting um, campaigns, when you are doing some proactive approaches to identify what's happening in your environment. So some of them are how the attacker entered the endpoint. You can check the network connections. You can check the processes. What has been done so far by the attacker, the process history. What are the processes that ran on a network? What are the processes that ran on an endpoint? And not only a single endpoint, if the same process was running on some other endpoint, that means you can see if the network, if the attacker is moving laterally or not, then where did the attacker navigate to? All the process details you will have. So how to respond to it? Either you create a watch list that if this process runs, I saw it on a one single endpoint, but if the same process runs anywhere in my network on any other endpoint, I need to have an alert. You can create a watch list. You can do a prevention response as well. That if something happens, if something this malicious behavior executes at any other endpoint, stop it right away. If it's even more, if it's moving laterally, you can say if this behavior is being observed without me touching anything, isolate the endpoint machine to stop it right away, to remediate. So these are different options that you have. There are more also that we can discuss further, but these are the few that you can do to respond to your threats. So some of the, at the end, some of the solutions that I'm going to discuss about are VMware Carbon Black, Endgame, CrowdStrike. There are lots of more EDR solutions in the market as well. These are the only few that I'm mentioning, but I will mention in the description down below some of the more as well that you can go through, go online, see their demos, see everything. But the, uh, the knowledge about the EDR is really, really important and you should understand the importance of it as we discussed that it is collecting very huge set of artifacts from your endpoints. And those can be used in threat hunting. Those can be used in the detection and the prevention. Because previously, the approach was different. Now the attackers have excelled in so many domains and that they can navigate in your network. They can stay still and they can be dormant in your environment and you won't even, even know that. So for that, the EDS solutions are very important and they are coming very heavy around what are they collecting. How to use them is left on to you and your imagination. So that was it from our site on the EDR. Wait for the next video. Until then, subscribe to our channel and give us a boost. Thank you so much.